It's five o'clock on a Wednesday and it's time for... A Craig and Roland Magic Review Show. I'm Craig. I'm Roland. Welcome back to another review show right here on... Magic TV. Absolutely. We're back with another review show looking at five new tricks this week. Five really cool tricks. Some that aren't so good, but we'll get into that a little bit later on. First of all, thank you once again for joining us here on, right, uh, on Magic TV. We really appreciate it, don't we, buddy? Yeah. And we're going to get straight into it. Uh, with a uh, with a trick by one of your favourite and my favourite magicians, David Regal. I say it's a trick, it's not really a trick, it's more of a utility item. If you're intrigued, let's have a look at the first review. Okay, so the first review is called PUP, uh, which stands for Particularly Useful Purse. Okay. And it's by David Regal, and I'm not going to perform this, and the reason I'm not going to perform it is because there's no trick to it. It's yeah, not a you trick. You told me it's more like a yeah, switching Yeah, it's, it's, it's a switching device, yeah. yeah. And let me just read the ad copy, because this is kind of summarises it. Coins should be examined before the magic happens. These specially designed leather purses allow the performer to switch out any number of coins from a group or introduce something extra. Uh, designed to look like nothing, a simple and elegant solution for the right tool for the right job by David Regal. So, obviously, there's things out there that switch coins, like, like uh, Quiver. Quiver is a perfect example of something oh, yeah, that will Quiver. switch something in and out. Uh, but David has created these particularly useful purses. Now, the reason that I'm not doing a performance for this is because the tutorial's six minutes long and doesn't really have any tricks in it. Does it have a live performance? There's no live performance, there's no performance. Basically what, what he does, and this you can actually see this on the trailer, is he takes some coins out of purse, puts them to one side, put the purse away, and in that action he switched the coins for a bunch of other coins. Now he talks about how uh, one of his favourite tricks is like copper, silver, brass, and he created this because he was going to work at the Magic Castle and he wanted to do copper, silver, brass, but he didn't actually have a way of switching the coins in and out. So he created this so that he, uh, so, so that he was able to switch the coins. Now, what you actually get inside the package is you get two purses. Uh, and there's some coins here, but these are ones that I've been practicing with. So you get two of them. They're made exactly the same way. They function exactly the same way, but you get two of them. Now, this one here is designed, according to David, for more formal situations. So it's like black uh, leather with a, a red satin interior. And then this one here is for more sort of everyday situations where you've got like brown leather and a uh, kind of a dark interior, dark brown interior. Um, so you can pick whichever one that you want to use or, you, you, get, you know, depending on whether you're carrying your stuff out of the house or not. Now, what's nice about this is let's say that you are doing a coin trick that requires four half dollars or four coins, for example. You can put them in there. They're staying in there nice and safe. The, uh, the, the zip will allow you to keep everything completely um, in place. And then using the gimmick that is, uh, I say it's a gimmick, you can examine this and it doesn't look like it's gimmicked. But using, I don't know, let's, let's call it the holdout. What you can do is you can have coins, two coins, three coins, just held out like that. Um, so you don't even have to switch it. One thing that I realized from watching David is you can bring out the purse like this very, very cleanly. You can show everything, show your hands empty. You can open up the purse, you can tip the coins out. And in that action right there, the coins can be examined and now I can switch in an extra coin if I want to. Uh, so if I was doing something like Charming Chinese Challenge, I can switch in that extra coin. Or I can now go into a situation where once the coins have been examined, one, two, three, or even all four of those coins can be switched for another four coins. And then the coins get put down on the table, the purse gets put away, and I'm ready to go into the routine. David says, yeah, David says yeah. it's really important to do this. He says that when he does a coin trick, he wants to have the coins examined at the beginning. He thinks that's very important. He yeah. says, it, and, and, and he says this is basically designed not really to do a trick. It's not like you're gonna use this to make coins disappear and appear inside there. It's not a trick, but what it will allow you to do is basically switch stuff in and out. Like you do a lot of coin magic. Yeah. Um, you use a shell. Quite a lot yeah. of your coin work, although a lot of the stuff you do is regular coins. Mm -hmm. um, but you do you use a shell, for example. You could have a shelled coin um, hidden in the holdout, have the four coins examined, and then switch the shell coin into play. And and what's nice is everything stays secure inside your pocket. So you know, like sometimes when you do coin magic, everything's bouncing around in there, and you can't know which coin to get. Everything is secure inside this, so you can bring it out, tip out what you need, get access to the hidden thing. 
and uh, and then you can switch or add or do whatever you want to do. So there's not really a performance. I can't really perform it for you guys because there's not really anything to perform. It's more of a, you know, telling you what it is. Now, the, the purses are very well made. They will last a very long time. They're made out of genuine leather. The tutorial is only six minutes long, but it's really David talking about how they work, how the switch works, and why he thinks that's important. It's not like he's teaching magic tricks. So it doesn't need to be that long. It doesn't need to have a live performance because there's no trick that he's teaching. I um, mean, at least it's not nine hours. All right, okay, calm down. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Yeah, my tutorials can be a bit long. Um, yeah. And you're going to have to watch that nine hour tutorial as well to review it. Um, yeah, you will. I'm not uh, staying up all day. No, you can just do it one day Saturday. You'll spend the entire Saturday learning. No, I'm trick. not going to spend no, no, the entire no, no. Saturday watching a tutorial. Yeah, yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. You're going to get up at 8 o'clock. You're going to go to bed at 9 o'clock. And there a whole day. We're just going to get you to watch the tutorial. Then you'll know everything. That's only that's like four hours of practicing and nine hours of watching the tutorial. There you go. Um, yeah. So, uh, look, this is great if you need. Now, I use Quiver. Uh, an awful lot as you guys know and I do a lot of routines where I'm switching things in and out using quiver I do like these I am going to use them um, I'm going to put uh, some various different gimmick coin sets in them and use those I do think that the actual switch is really nice it's very low tech it's not as clever as a, as a quiver for example but it does what in, it is intended to do it's really Can nice I that? like it a quiver can switch things in and out but you have to put the coins back in in order to switch them this the advantage of it is you don't need to put them back inside the uh, purse. You tip them out, you put the purse away, and they're switched. And if you go watch the trailer for this, you'll see the trailer is basically David doing that in real time in front of you. So you can see exactly what the switch looks like. It looks great. I'm going to give this 95%. I think it's brilliant. What about you? Mm, I don't think I'd do it. So I'm like, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to give it 79. 79. He's a purist. 79 percent It means that you really just use stuff with regular coins, generally. Uh, seventy nine percent from Ireland, ninety five percent from me. I think it's really good. Now we're going to move on to something that isn't so good. Okay, so the next trick has been brought out by Deceptive Dreams. If you don't know who Deceptive Dreams are, it's uh, Peter Egging's company, and uh, this isn't a Peter so Egging trick. This is why. this is uh, called Bisection. It's by uh, Armanjur Armanjuman Abir, uh, something like that. And it's called bisection. It's basically kind of like a cut and restored card, but without actually cutting the card. Um, it's kind of weird to describe, really. I think the best thing to do is to watch this. So this is a video from Ryland's Instagram channel. It'll give you an idea of exactly what the trick looks like and how it plays. So let's have a look at this Instagram video, it's first of all. It's just a very short little thing. Yeah, just you look. just got to do. Yeah. Don't. Have a look at this video. It's like five seconds long. Yeah, have a look at this video. It'll tell you exactly what it is that it does, and then uh, and then we'll talk about what it's like. So that was uh, bisection. I mean, I, I, you saw what it was. So you have a card picked, um, you would have it signed, and then you would take it, you'd put that little piece of cardboard with the scissors on it, pretend to cut through it, and then you can move the card to one side, and then it moves back, and then you take the thing off, and you're done. Um, it's obviously a gimmick card. Now, the gimmick card, uh, I don't think it's giving too much away to say that the gimmick card is double-backed. So what that means is that you can have it on top of the deck, you can have the card picked, you can have the card signed, and by doing a double lift, you can actually get this gimmick card into play. For some reason, I thought a double lift was called a double decker then. No. So it's very easy to get the card into play, which is good, because they're going to have any card, they're going to sign it, and that card's going to come into play. Then this is where the issues happen uh, from my point of view. So first of all, um, once you've got the gimmick card in play, you can't show it on either side. You can only just show it from the one side. Um, so when you put this piece of cardboard on and you pretend to cut and you pull it over, it looks impossible. I mean, the visual is actually quite good. 
Um, but you can't show it on all sides at that point. You have to hold hold a, a very tight grip at that point once it's been sort of separated. And then when it comes back, it's meant to come back like um, uh, kind of all the way itself. It doesn't, does it? It goes back part of the way, and then you kind of have to push it with your finger yeah, the rest of the way. Yeah, you have to do that. Um, and then you can take the thing off and you're left with the card. Now, the card is very gimmicked. They can't touch it. They can't go anywhere near it. And therein, for me, lies one of the big problems. This is a trick. That people will want to examine. Oh, they'll want to examine it. When they see that, they're going to want to examine it. And there's no talk on how to actually have it examined because the only way, really, to have it examined is to pick up the deck, put the card back on the deck, I was about to say, do a double turnover. I was about to say, you could use that pass, but no, well, it's a coin pass. No. You just do a double turnover and you give the signed card back or yeah. pick up the deck, take the, take the card and do a top change. The problem is that's exactly the wrong time to do the switch Yeah. because the heat so is on the, the card. It's the thing with tricks. Some, they're just, sometimes you just like do it. They're watching the card and you just do it and it's like, it's just like not the right moment to do it because they're focusing on that card. Like usually when you do a top change, it's just like, it's just like, yeah, yeah. And then you just like do it's it. It's done on then, the offbeat, yeah. yeah. It's on the offbeat. But when this, when they're watching the card and you just do that, it just it's just the wrong time to do it. Yeah, everyone's going to be focusing on that trick right there. Everyone's going to be focusing on that card. And uh, anything that, other than handing them that card back is going to look suspicious. Yeah, the thing I like with magic tricks is that they have... They 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 don't last like five seconds like this. Like some tricks, they can last five seconds, but they're really good. Like if you if usually, because not all, it's not always like this, but usually if you have a very short like, trick like five or ten seconds, they don't have me very many moments of magic. No. And you want them to have lots of moments of magic, just yeah. to make it look good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and this is over, this is over very very quickly, and there's only one yeah. moment of magic. You just it's just when you like yeah, watch this. And yeah. I, I really do think yeah. that the fact that you can't show it completely yeah. when it's when it's separated, you can't like turn it over. And then the other thing is, we're not going to say what, but this uses a certain type of substance that's prone to breaking, and the trailer or the tutorial, sorry, does not actually show you how to fix it. And I and bet you it doesn't come with spares. It doesn't come with spares. It doesn't tell you how to fix it. And you're putting pressure on this certain substance. So at some point is it is... Is uh, you, I'm not trying to say what it is. You know exactly what I'm talking about. I yeah, 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 yeah. Um, That's what I'm saying. Uh, it puts it pressure on this thing. This, some people this probably know what we're talking about. Yeah, but yeah, we're, right. being, um, we're being vague. Uh, and I think it will break. And when it does, the only way to fix it is to get another one because they've not yeah. told you how to actually fix it. Um, it also can't be done very close up. Because if you're very close to the card, you see exactly, you'll see the cut and everything. It's about 30 odd pounds for one gimmicked card. The tutorial is woeful. Uh, it's like a it's 10 minute. It, <laughs> there you go. It's a 10 minute tutorial. It's just a guy. I think it's the creator going through it very, very briefly. There's no live performance or anything like that. It's just really underwhelming. I think that, um, you know, the thing is when you create magic, when you start creating something like this, I think it just comes across as a little bit like lazy, to be perfectly honest, because I think this is the first idea that this guy probably had for this trick. And it could have probably been a lot better. It really could have been a lot better. But as it is, it's massively flawed in so many different ways. And it's kind of like they've gone, well, you know what? I know it's flawed, but, you know, we'll get it out there and a few people will buy it and we'll make a few quid. That's how it feels. Um, I know this isn't the first trick that uh, this guy's brought out through uh, Peter Eggings Company. It feels like a Peter Dragon trick. What was, this the, is, what was this? What's the first trick? I can't remember. It was like, do you remember that vibrating thing that they had that made the thing? I can't even remember now. It was terrible. Um, I'm going to give this. There's no redeeming qualities at all to this. I'm going to give this 0%. Uh, I think that anybody who buys this will be disappointed in it. I think they're going to put it straight in their bottom drawer. They're not going to do it. You're going to be worried about doing this to someone because it doesn't hold up to scrutiny up close. You know, and, and there's no instruction on how to actually deal with the fact that this is going to want to be examined. Zero percent for me. What about you? Minus a trillion. Wow, he's on one tonight, ladies and gentlemen. A rip-off. 
There's one for the ad copy. A rip-off and minus a trillion percent from the Kid Magician. So minus a trillion percent from him, zero percent from me. Uh, it's not very good. Let's move on. Okay, so now we're back with the San Diego Magic Company. And we've got a Yay. trick called The Can. That's what it's called. It's called The Can. I thought it was uh, called Running Through Solid. No, that's just what the trick is. It's called The Can. Uh, it's, by, uh, it's by the San Diego Magic Shop. And The Can basically is... Um, well, it's a, it's a coin in can. It's, now, there's been a the can. It's, good, it's the can. Mm -hmm. You get a, you get a custom created can that allows you to perform a very clean coin through can. And it looks like a normal can. It looks like a normal can. Now you can even like bash on the bottom. You just go. Yeah. And, and it so looks like. like well, I, I think we've got it in here. Uh, this is the can. It looks. Yeah, you can. You, you can, can see like, it from all angles. Like, you can see it normally in the all angles. You're like solids on the top. Solids at the side. Yeah, it looks it looks like a can that's just been opened up and the stuff's been tipped out. So if you're oh, performing at uh, if you're performing at a barbecue or you're performing outside or oh, something, yeah, you, you can, can just put that to one side. And then it's yeah, like, and then oh, just... can you show me a trick? Well, exactly. Yeah. I've got this can. Um, I think it's kind of a weird thing to carry around with you to a gig. Hi, my name's Craig. I'm the magician. How you doing? I've got an empty can here. Let me show you in a miracle. But you could do, I suppose. Um, but it does Go look on, just like a normal can. And what you do is you push the coin into the can quite visually yeah you can like you could like have it at the um bottom like uh like have it here and, just like, and you can push it to the side like you've wrecked your can i'm going to show you a performance of ryland when he did this on instagram so this is a performance of ryland performing the can on instagram I'll let's have a look I'll, I'll just need a pencil to just like stick to it he's broke his can let's uh I actually just need a pencil, that's all. Let's look at this live performance and then we'll bring it back into the studio. Okay, so I've got my dad behind my camera. Now I've got this coin here. Now I'm going to put a word on for my dad. Dad, what word would, word would you like? Well, you've got a cube on your T-shirt. Let's write cube. Okay. We'll put cube on the coin, okay? Got it? Yeah. Right. Now I'm going to push this coin through this can. Now you can see... That this can is completely solid, yeah? Yep. Are you ready on the count of three? One, two, three. Just like that. And you can see that this can is inside. No uh, the way. coin is inside the can. I don't know if you can see in there, but that coin is inside there. Yes, I can see the coin right there in the can. That's cool, right? So that was a performance of the can. Um, now, we used a half dollar in that performance because we wanted it. It was for Instagram. We weren't planning on taking the coin out. We weren't going to do a ton of But in the tutorial, uh, they suggest using a small coin, like a 5p or a dime, having it signed, pushing it into the can. And, and then what you can do is um, you can, like, like, the top of the can where you've got that, like, I don't know how to describe it. The opening? Yeah, yeah, the opening where it's, like, shh. It's like that at the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. And then uh, basically, if you just hold it upside down and you just like nudge the coin until it's like, like, um, like you've nudged it till it's like, because you've got that, if you nudge it till it's vertical, it just goes and it slides out like that. Okay. So let me ask you a question. Uh, or you... if it's a 5p, they're so small, it would just literally, you just go like that and it'll probably just come out straight away. So I know you like this and you yeah, watched the great. tutorial and focused on the tutorial. So let me ask you a couple of questions. Now, first of all, your problem with the previous trick was that it can't be examined. Don't you think that's an issue with this one, or do you think the fact that it can be shown so freely? It's I, I don't think they'll want to examine it, especially as you can especially as you've like bashed it with the coin, bash it on the top, bash it at the bottom, you can like clearly show that um you can clearly show that it is uh, just a normal can. Okay. Well you'll think, you... well you can show you can clearly show that you know, so it looks like a normal can. And then you would just take it out the top. So you don't yeah. think not examining it is not an issue? Uh, not being examinable is, is fine with this. Okay. And you would... So where would you consider yourself performing this? Where would you do this? Oh, I think I'd do it... Um, I'm thinking of something... Um, like maybe for a uh, like a show, like just on stage. Like it's a funny gag. Like you keep on going to the can and taking the fake drinks out of it, like... Every so often again, and uh, you say, "Would you like to see one more?" And, see, and they'll go, "Yeah, I'd like to see one more." And 
anything. Well, I know this can have been ginger hair. I mean, you can go and see it like that. You can do it as a close-up trick, uh, I think. Uh, like, you bring the can out your case. Oh, I had this earlier. Oh, uh, I don't think I could do with this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And it, it is very visual. It really is. I do love the visual nature of boom you put the cat you put the coin in and then you shake it so they can hear it in there and then that point your hands are empty the coin genuinely is inside the can which is great that's the thing yeah when you do this the coin genuinely is inside so the can, can shake so it. when you take the small yeah when i first showed you the gimmick you thought that was what was making the noise but yeah. the coin was actually inside yeah it is actually the actual coin which is pretty cool um, and I've seen various different versions of this. I'm gonna be honest. I you like could, you could you could actually have a normal can that can be examined, and you and you like um, you like put a rattle box in it. Like you could like go, hey guys, watch this, and you take the coin, uh, fake fault transfer, put that in your pocket or something, and just go. And shake well, it uh, your friend Peter Egan came up with something like that. It was his last good trick. He came out with it at Blackpool before COVID, and he had a remote control. He called it Coin to Can. And he had a remote control and he had a sound making device in the can. So you put it inside the can and the idea is somebody could hold onto the can. And then when he, pre he took the coin, did a false transfer. And when he presses the button on the remote control, they hear and feel the coin See, go into it in, in their own hands. Well, that's, yeah, that's, that's now, having said that, that, that would have been good. It was good. Now, having said that, I'm not going to do this. Not because I don't think it's good. I think it's really good. I think that the method is great. I love the idea of using a smaller coin and having it come out through the top because my issue when you first showed me this is, well, how are you supposed to get the coin out and prove it's not in there? I don't think that's an issue at all, having now um, understood exactly what's happening. My issue, my issue with this isn't really an issue. It's just the fact that I do a trick called Sinful by, uh, by Wayne Outchin. Now, you've never seen Sinful. It was performed by Chris Angel in his TV show. And you can literally borrow any can but it's unopened, it's a real can. You can have a, can. an unopened okay. can. You can take the coin, you can take the can, you do this, and the coin goes in the can. You show your hands empty, you show the can all the way around, you get them to listen, and they can hear the coin inside the can. You then open it up, and you pour out the drink, and as you do, they then look inside themselves, and that coin is inside that can. And then they, it genuinely is in there, and then they have to open it to take it out. It's called Sinful by Wayne Hampshire. I've performed it for you, but you probably don't remember because you're about four years old. But every summer when I'm booked to do fun days and I'm walking around, it's my go-to trick. It's my favourite coin to can. And I would never change doing that for anything else. And the advantage of that is I can say to somebody, you want to see a trick? Go over there, buy a can. Doesn't matter what the can is, go and buy a can, bring it back, I'll show you a miracle. And it's their can. Um, now, this is good. Yeah, you could say bought the thing. They could just choose a drink that they would like. You can, you can say, oh, oh, I've got this glass here. You could like, you could say, look, and then you could like pour it into the glass, and they can, and then if you're lucky enough, you might get the coin to come out with it. But that's a rare chance of happening. You can, um, you can have the coin in there, and then you give them the glass, and they can drink it, and then you say, look, look, coin, really is in there. Yeah. So I like this. I think this is an elegant solution. It's much easier than Sinful. Sinful's a little bit more hard, a little bit more difficult. Uh, I do like this, but I'm giving it 79% because I'm not going to do it. Sinful's cool. Sinful's cool. I'll I'm going to give it 79 because I want to do Sinful. You don't even know what Sinful is. Yeah, but it sounds cool. <laughs> you can't mark something based on a trick that you've only heard me talk about. Given a grade as to what would you have given it if I hadn't mentioned Sinful to you? Probably some in like 90. So give it 90, and then what we'll do is before the next review show, yeah. I'll teach you Sinful, and we'll do a recap on it, and you can tell me if the grade... In fact, we'll do a retro review What's on that? Sinful. We'll look at... We'll do a review on Sinful, because it's about 15 years old now. We'll do a review That's on Sinful. Yeah, it's, oh, it's very That's old. It's older than me. It's older than you. So we'll do a review, a it's retro review on Sinful, and then we'll talk on the show as to whether your review for this is changed after you learn Sinful. Sound like a plan? But for now, 90% from Ryland, 79% from me. If you want a nice, easy solution to the coin in can, this is the one to go for. Uh, let's move on. So next up, we have Ultra Super Visual Silk to Rose by Juan Pablo. Um, we've got a bit of a love-hate relationship with Juan Pablo on this channel. Um, sometimes we love his stuff, sometimes we hate his stuff. 
Um, there's no middle ground. We either love him or hate him. Um, this is... I hate this one. Hmm? It's a hate. It's a hate? No. I don't know why I said that. It's, 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 I think this one is actually kind of in the middle. Yeah, it's you're... Nice. Ryan's annoyed because he can't do it. Because he's got little <laughs> pathetic baby hands. And he desperately wanted to perform this. And he couldn't because his hands are so tiny, little tiny hands, just like Ryland. And he's now upset that he can't perform it. So I'm going to have to perform it for you. It's a departure from the normal stuff that you'd see Juan Pablo do. It's normally, um, you know, look, Juan Pablo normally does very long card tricks. And um, uh, this is not a long card trick. Isn't that boring like yours? This is not a long card trick. Just because you can't do the silk to rose, oh, baby. Um, don't take it out on me and my long, boring card tricks. Um... <laughs> This is a uh, super visual and soup. key tricks and, and chocolate I, I don't even start with my key tricks. <laughs> my key tricks are awesome. Uh, super visual <laughs> soup to rose. And your corn chips. <laughs> I talked about apparition and a mirage. Here's a live performance. Okay, so I'm going to show you a trick with a, uh, a little red handkerchief. Right, can you see the little red handkerchief? Yeah. Watch this. If I do this, it turns into... A flower. Beautiful. Okay, that was quick. Um, that was that was all it is. It's, it's literally, literally... It's like that. Um, so, I mean, it's... I a can't do it. Yeah, because your hands are too tiny. Now, it's a manipulator's trick at the end of the day. This is not something for a close-up magician. This is not something for a uh, strolling magician. Uh, you wouldn't want to do this, really, I think, if you're a kid's magician. This is really designed for a stage manipulator, a stage performer. It's the sort of trick that is designed for you, because you do a lot of manipulation on stage. You do multiplying balls. You're making coins appear. You're producing if canes. Get, if we could get those orange multiplying balls or some red multiplying balls, we could, um, we, at the end, we can turn a ball into... We could turn one of... Well, I've got bigger hands, so my hands go... We could turn a ball into silk and, and a silk into rose. There you go. And then you know the rose, you know the top of the rose. Mm -hmm. You can have a ball loaded in there, and then you can turn the rose back into a ball. You're going to win fist in one year with a manipulation act, I'm telling you right now. Um, yes, uh, so it's a manipulator's trick. Uh, it's, it's really cool. You know, the stage, uh, if you're a stage performer, it's great. Uh, I, I don't know what to say. I don't perform this type of magic. You are going to need fairly big hands because you're palming the rose in essence and it's got uh, the gimmick built into it. It's, 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 it's a nice production. I'm never going to do it. I just figured out how to do that. I'm not surprised. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to do this. I'm not the manipulator of the family. I might do this in a manipulation act when my hands are bigger. Yeah. Good job. Well, you already do a manipulation act. But you might do this in your manipulation yeah, act. Yeah, when, okay. when, when my hands go. Fair enough. When my hands go like, your, like, like yours and they go, whoo! And you've got a while to go yet. Yeah, yeah, you've got a way while to go. And this, this thing needs to go. It yeah. needs to go that big. You need to that go a bit big. bigger. Look, I'm going to give this uh, 79%. I'm not going to do it. It's not something I would ever do. But if you're looking for a way to make a silk turn into a rose in an act, if that's something what you're looking for, this is well made. It's not hard to do. Did you, did you just say something what you're looking for? Yeah, if it's what... If it's, you just said something what you're looking for. Oh, you know what I mean. It's something what you're looking for. If it is something what you're looking for. It's, if it is something that's that you're looking for. Give it a grade, Ryland. What are you giving it? Well, for now, I can't do it, so it's going to be 79. 79% from Ryland. But when I can do it, it's going to be... But now, little baby hands gives it it's 79%. Good. But when I've got big hands... Huge daddy nine, hands. It's 93%. 93% if his hands were actually grown up. Unfortunately, they're not. So When they grow, like... 79% from him. 79% from me. I can palm anything. No, if I get the size of, like, that big, I can palm anything. I don't know if you can palm the world. We've got one last trick. Let's make it quick. Okay, so the final trick that we are looking at today is the Steel Ball Penetration by mm -hmm. Carl Hein Tanzer. Uh, now, the only place we've found that you can get this from at the moment is Nate Cranzo's Magic Stop. So if you want to go and learn this and buy this, it's from can Cranzo you get, Magic. Can you get a second one for me? This is yours. Okay. Yes, this is yours. Are you going to get a second one for you? Very possibly. I very much like this. Uh, it's a very cool trick. 
Um, little ball berries. Yeah, right. I love playing with ball berries. The noise they make when you drop them on the wooden floor. They're great, aren't they? <laughs> now, if you haven't seen this, Ryland's going to show you a performance now that he filmed for Instagram. Let's have a look at this performance that Ryland did for Instagram. And then after that, we'll talk about, uh, about the pros and cons and what's so good about it. Okay, so I've got a few things. I've got a pack of cards, a little ball bearing, uh, a little plate with some holes in it, and a uh, glass. So I'm going to put the ball bearing uh, in the centre hole, so that way it won't like roll away. So I'll put that on there. And I'll grab a card. It doesn't matter which card. We've got the Ace of Diamonds, my dad's favourite card. I'm going to put it on here like this. One, two, three. You can see I can push that ball bearing through like that. Look, I'm going to take that ball bearing like this and I'm going to um, put it at the centre hole again. Now, some people think that the um, the hole widens. So I'll grab another card. So we've got the four of hearts and we'll uh, push it there. So still in the centre hole and we'll grab uh, the ace of diamonds again. Are you ready? I'm going to count through. One, two, three. You can see that we now have the ball just inside there. So there we go, and, uh, and, and that's the performance. Now, what's really cool about this is it is actually really practical without getting into why it's practical. Um, although you've got a ball bearing and you've got this steel uh, sort of, yeah, so you've got ball bearing and you've got this um, sort of thing that you put over a glass and you've got a pack of cards. Everything is designed so it all go, kind of goes into one pocket and you can very easily bring everything out immediately and, and, and just get it straight into position. So it's actually really practical. My first concern when I saw this was, this does not look very practical at all. I'm going to have lots of little bits and pieces everywhere and I'm going to lose it. But no, that's not the case. You stick it all in your pocket and you're good to go and you can just take it out. Um, what you just saw Ryan do there is the two-phase routine. Um, the first phase is the ball penetrates through the um, uh, through the hole. You can actually have them choose the hole if you want to. You can have it go through any hole. makes no difference. And then the second phase is you do it again, uh, but there's a card in place stopping it going through the holes because the presentation is maybe you think that the holes expand, so I'll do it again. Everything's examinable at every step of the way. Um, so there's no tutorial with this it's written instructions very old school you get two sheets you don't sheets. really need to look at the instructions well if I'm, you can figure it out if you, i know you like to try and figure stuff out before watching tutorials you're yeah. a proper man when it comes to that sort of stuff so what do you think um you're the one that learned it you're the one that has done it what do you think of it i think it's really cool do you remember that really rubbish dice trick that we looked at from um um a penguin recently where it was like uh, the card like flapped open and it was just blatantly obvious what was going on and I was like this is the worst penetration ever if you're going to have an object penetrate a card and go into a glass there's way better ways of doing it this is an example of a way I better one yeah you, you probably blocked it out of your memory because it was terrible um, there's, there's, there's way better ways of doing it I told you this is a way better way of doing it oh yeah this is great it's awesome it's awesome you can tell he's tired He's always like this when he's tired. Yes, it is awesome. Uh, I really like it. I think that that moment where it penetrates solid through mm -hmm. solid, after and, and understand this, they examine everything. Everything. And then you like just put everything. the ball on top. They can see the whole thing, and you just tap it with the card. And as soon as you do, the ball goes through. And then the card can be, you can show the card both sides. You can show that both sides. You can show everything. Like, everything, yeah. It's really, really good. The it. method is great. Um, yeah, you're definitely going to do this, aren't you? Yes. Um, I'm going to give this... I'm not... I don't, I'm going to give it 98%. It's not quite 100, but it's close for me. This is... So you're going to have to buy another. How much are they? They're not expensive, actually. I think they're about 30 bucks. Not a rip-off, actually. Not a rip-off when you consider you get all of the props, if you think about everything that you get. And it's very easy to do. Everything you... but one card. Yeah. For the second phase. Yeah, well, you, you, need, just you just need to get one card. Or you can throw one it into a deck of cards. One normal playing card. Or yeah. you can buy a deck of cards. Yeah. Um, but you yeah. just like grab a card off yourself. You go. Hmm. Well, you watch, You read the whole thing and then showed it me. And I think you learned it in about five minutes, didn't you? I think it was two. Two minutes. There you go. <laughs> All you need to do is literally just do. And then you do. Switch and then. Down. I know how the trick works. I have no idea what this is that he's pointing out. No, no, you do this. You put it on the static card. Put it on the glass. 
You can open the card to pull back and pull through. You do this thing, you put it on, you do it there, you put it on, and then you put the card underneath, and then you do that, and then it pulls through again. And then it's all examinable. Yeah. And it's an instant reset. They uh, can, they can, they can look. Well, they can't look at, from every. Mm, no. Not every angle, but most angles. Yeah, it's very, very clean. If you're looking from down here. You might see something. Oh. So don't perform it on a two-year-old, although a two-year-old's probably less concerned about the trick and more concerned about eating dirt, really. Um, uh, that's what you used to do at the age of two. You used to eat dirt in the... Uh, I used to, what? You ate a worm once. You oh. ate a worm when you were two. You ate a worm. I stopped you. You'd half eaten the worm. It's disgusting. I did what? You ate the worm. Half a worm. I did what? You ate half a worm. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Can you remember when you were two? I do. I was there. No. You ate half a worm. No, I did not. You did. You ate dirt. You always ate dirt, and then you ate you ate a worm, half a worm. You did. We're going to wrap this up now. Nobody cares about your worm eating abilities. I didn't eat a worm. You ate a worm. When did I ever eat a worm? When you were two. When you were two. You ate a worm. You ate a worm. Shut up, Emmy, Dad. Did I eat a worm? Yes, you ate a worm. I did not eat a worm. Look, you ate a worm. Can we wrap this up? No. Go and do the bouncy thing. That's another review show in the bag. Get it. That's another review show in the bag. Oi. That's another review show in the bag. Ouch. That's another review show in the bag. Oh, don't you even dare. That is another review show in the bag. Thank you. In the bag. Ouch. No, that's another review show in the bag. Stop it now. In the bag, bag, bag. <laughs> That is another review show in the bag. Thank you once again for joining me right here on Magic TV. Now, don't forget, you want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. If you want to follow Ryland on Instagram or YouTube or um, Facebook, go to Ryland the Kid Magician. Uh, we'll be back again next week with another review show. Also, Ryland, tell them where you can uh, learn from the Netrix. www. Who cares? www.thenetrix.cookies.com. We'll see you again next We'll see you again next week. Cookie. Say bye, Ryland. Cookie, 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 cookie. Goodbye. See you later. Cookie bye.